actually gets worse when I work on my posture. Well, I think the hair is a problem too. I'll be oh. honest with you. I think, I think you know we need a bit of gel or something. All the boys have got stuff in their hair. Uh, Harry's hair is like Medusa. It's got a life of its own. No, it's <laughs> Liam. Liam, I like his hair. You like his hair? Best? Oh, it's a. Does it move? Look at it. Yeah, Do yeah. everything you can to make your head move. <laughs> your head, nothing, nothing happens. Wow, look at that. Oh, now my hair's gone even worse. I've yeah, seen. Yeah. No, no, your hair's fine for you. It no, just no, isn't... I'm not happy. Bring. I need product. Okay. Someone's got to bring. <laughs> Could could one of, could some one of Zane's follicle... Well, not Zane's, you see, somebody... that's what I'm <laughs> Well, I miss him. <laughs> Should I not have mentioned Zane? Cos I'm looking at you and I'm thinking, Zane. <laughs> I think the problem is there are so many signs up around the building saying, don't fucking mention Zane. <laughs> You've got Zane brain. I've gone insane. Don't say... <laughs> don't, don't mention it again. I haven't actually gone insane. I just want to make... That was just a... <laughs> not... Why did you do that? What did I do? Well, I don't know. You started it. You, okay, you so wanted listen. to not mention Zane. And I know, but now that's all we're talking about. <laughs> yes. uh, OK, so... <laughs> that was oh. awesome. Uh, so, first of all, lovely to have you back here, boys. I need to check, cos... Uh, I know you've met the boys before, Michael, but, but when you're working with One Direction, I realise now it's a bit like going on a long car journey with children. You need to check first, do any of you need to go to the toilet? <laughs> because we had a moment last time you were on the show, didn't we? Yeah, we did, but um, what people didn't know about that was you told me I could go to the toilet in two minutes, the interview would be quick. Yeah. 20 minutes later, you let me go to the toilet. Wow. So, at any chance tonight, <coughs> they offer you a drink backstage, I've turned it down, I've dehydrated. But I figured you're young men, I figured you've got your bladders are working fully, you know, cos, like, man of my age, sure, you don't pass up the opportunity to go to a toilet, do we, Michael? You go, never pass up the opportunity to go to a toilet and never trust the fart. But you guys... <laughs> your age, I imagine, you, I thought you could hang, but you were actually in pain. It's actually in pain. At one stage, I thought it was weighing down my leg. <laughs> I apologise, Flex. I didn't wish that on you, but you're OK right now. No one needs a, a comfort yeah, break as they call it. Three times. Right now, okay. yeah. in that room. All right. So you've just finished. Uh, now, am I right? This was your fourth world tour. Yeah. What do you miss when you're away, and what is it when you finish? What do you think? OK, I can now have the time to do this that I couldn't do when I was on the road. Well, I mean, being in hotels, having a fridge is always that's actually a really good thing when you get home. I mean, yeah. your own fridge with your own. Stuff in. Yeah, but sorry. then there is room service the opposite side as well. I'm so glad I can, I can help. <laughs> there's a fridge, there's a mini bar. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a mini bar just under the telly. Yeah. <laughs> you've been on the tour for five years, you've never looked under the telly. I, 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 I just love this stuff. It's amazing, it's got all these little bottles of stuff and there's <laughs> <it's really good. laughs> But they charge you, Louis, what do you look for? When you get your life back, which I guess this is what's happening here. Um, I like to just play football when I'm at home, to be honest, because obviously we don't get a lot of time on the road, so just have a lot of kick-arounds nice with the lads, yeah. Howie? I think it's probably sleeping in different beds is it's nice when you're at <laughs> home for a while. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> I agreed with you, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think we all agree, Sorry. but most of us don't get the chance. <laughs> we can skip those questions. No, why are we skipping that question? <laughs> and Niall, um, for you, apart from the same answer? I guess, uh, just home cooking. Yeah. Like, your mum's cooking That's and stuff what? like that. What does, uh, what does your mum cook that you particularly like? When you get home, what do you ask her to do first? What's the first one? Like, su uh, Sunday roast, even if it's not Sunday. Yeah, just yeah. Just hope that she's Crazy. got some sort of... Uh, yeah, I'm a rebel. Nice. So, like, um, a mo like a Monday roast? <laughs> yeah, Monday roast. <laughs> Tuesday roast? Yep. Wednesday? No. <laughs> um, OK. <laughs> when, when you're away like that, when you're, you know, we know you're, you're travelling a lot and we know you're having fun as well, um, but are there times when you think, OK, I, well, not that I wish this didn't happen, but I wouldn't mind knowing what a normal life was like? Cos your life for the first five years, uh, last years, have been extraordinary and peculiar in some ways, I would have thought. And there must be times when you wonder, you know, what would it be like if we hadn't come third in X Factor? No, because <laughs> you've done <laughs> OK for yeah. yourselves, you know what I mean? It's like... Um, I don't think we'd change anything. I, I, you know, we've, we've all feel very lucky to have kind of had this opportunity, and I think if we sat and started thinking, oh, I wish we'd have played more pubs and clubs, it'd be like a silly way to look at it. Well, I so. guess you could do a pub or club we if could. you wanted to. Are yeah. you ever tempted to sneak in and do a kind of undercover gig like that just for the hell of it? 
I did uh, one I went to Florida. Yourself. I forgot to tell you this actually. I did karaoke in um, in an Applebee's in America, which was hilarious. <laughs> and this guy just looks around to me. Oh, nice voice, kid. As literally <laughs> <what> I was like, <laughs> What did you sing? <laughs> I sang um, Ordinary People by um, John Legend, which yes. is nice. Oh, nice. It's but good karaoke tune. Yeah, yeah. Well, so that's good. We are ordinary people. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know which way to go. <laughs> Take it slow. <laughs> you know what's so tragic, though? This is clearly an audition. <laughs> I mean, he's clearly. <laughs> OK, um, well, that's reminded me of a name that blurted out earlier on, of course. Zane is missing, of course. He's gone, he's left the band. He left Zane what? is missing?! <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone seen Zane? <laughs> I'm uh, Zane, come on! <laughs> So, uh, is missing. That Sorry. was a fair, but it seemed very abrupt to the outside world. The one minute it was with you, and the next minute it seemed like he was going to go, and then he was gone very quickly. So, um, who wants to answer this one? What, what happened there? What went on? And, and who, who amongst you was aware beforehand that he was beginning to feel uncomfortable and wanted to leave the band? You want to answer this one, Michael? Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, Zane is Zane is. As we all know, he's one of the boys, he's a talent, he's exceptional, he, he's got it all, you know? And uh, we're on the road, and to be honest, the thing is, is that I couldn't find the fridge. I called Liv. I said, <laughs> I said, Liv, where's the fridge? He said, McIntyre, you know there's no fridges in hotels, that's why I can't wait to get home. <laughs> he said, well, no. I said, I've just called that. He said, his mum's having another roast. Yeah. <laughs> So then I called Harry and, I don't know, I called the reception. They said he could be in literally any hotel <laughs> in the whole <laughs> of the country. <laughs> <laughs> so I called oh, Zane, dear. told him everything. He said, I've had enough of this. <laughs> well, that's one possible scenario, <laughs> OK? But uh, who was the closest to him in the band, and maybe still is? <sighs> you were, you know. Again, please. <laughs> 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 Louis, I think it was you, wasn't it? I think when we're in the band, yeah, probably, maybe, uh, maybe it was me. Um, and, you know, I think we, we all kind of noticed that he wasn't thoroughly enjoying it, and, yeah. uh, and we were. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it can be an intense job at times, and I think it got a little bit too much for him, and he wanted to be in a different place, and that's fair enough. And, you know, he's gone his own way now, so yeah. fair dues. Are you still close with him right now? Do you still speak too much? Mm. <laughs> when was the last time you talked to him? Uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago or something. So that's quite a while then, really. So he's still sorting himself out, I guess, and working out. Because there's a lot for him to process. Yeah, I think he wants to dis decision. distance himself. Let's FaceTime him! All right, fine, let's okay. not FaceTime him. Okay. Uh, he's <laughs> not available for FaceTime. Okay. <laughs> Uh, now, what are you guys going to do? You've announced that you're taking a break from performing and from recording as well, as I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's starting now, I guess, is it? Now you finish the tour? End of the year. End of the year. Yeah, end of the year. year. Okay, really, so yeah. between now and the end of the year, a few more things to do, and that's it. What are your plans? And do you know how long that's going to be for? Is that an indefinite break? Is that a year and a half, two years? What's the. I don't know. I think we, you know, we've got the album coming out and stuff, and obviously we just finished the tour, so we have a lot of work that we're still focusing on, and then. Um, I think the point of the break is that it's going to be a, a break and we're going to have some time off with no kind of pressure. And We kind of wanted to go on a holiday, but I, that's never going to happen. Like, we're the most, We're the least organised people ever. But you've been most places, but I guess when you go most places on tour, you don't get to see the places, do you? You're kind of, in a way, sort of trapped in your room, aren't you? Well, that was funny when you went on, uh, to um, Australia for your holiday the one time and they had... The radio stations look for Nile was the thing on the radio stations. <laughs> That's not a great thing they could do, really, for you. To no, you. Uh, it's not many <laughs> fun yeah, yeah. Charlie's, no. Did you find yourself? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. I found it. If there's a prize, you should have done that. <laughs> All right, let's take a break. We'll chat some more afterwards. And we've got a fun thing. Uh, I've asked uh, fans in the audience to give us a list of things. We're going to play that game, Never Have I Ever. Oh, God. Well, Michael, you're going to stay with us as well, I hope. Absolutely. Don't you kidding. go away. So stick around. We're back in a minute with Michael McIntyre and One Direction. <laughs> In one direction, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, it's fun to have you here. Thank you for coming back on the show. So, uh, there's this game that people play, and we've all done it, I'm sure. Uh, I have never, where you say you know, someone posits a suggestion, and everyone has to say whether they've done it or not. 
Okay. So I've got these paddles. It says never, and I have, so we can see instantly. Pass those down. Pass, pass, down. pass those down. Are you playing as well? Yeah, I'm going to play as well. I'm going to join in. And I've got these. These are questions we got from fans of yours in the audience. So uh, I'm going to start with this one. This is from Paula. I have never danced naked in the rain. Right. Naked. Oh. Naked. Three bold, adventurous young men, <laughs> three boring old farts down there. <laughs> okay. Do we include the rain setting on a shower? <laughs> have you danced naked in your shower? What's that bloody hat? <laughs> okay. I have never. Well, of course, I've been naked in the shower. That's a I know you're naked as well. The question is whether I've danced in the shower. I don't stand in the shower fully clothed. Well, do you dance in the shower? <laughs> Sometimes it's a bit of a boogie. <laughs> this is Jason. I've never been in the Mile High Club. <laughs> so wait. Harry, what are you waiting for? Come on, we know the answer. <laughs> yeah. I'll answer for you. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Harry just took out the shard. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, no one noticed. <laughs> okay, I have never been naked in public. Uh, no, uh, no, I've never been. No, no. <laughs> it's a choice. That's a choice we all have every all right. morning when we wake up. Okay. <laughs> here, this is a revealing one. This could be revealing. This is from Sam. Remember, guys, honesty is the key here. All right. I have never <laughs> smoked a joint. At each other, you can't you can't decide what's what you... the next one. No, we, let's answer this one. We I think we know the answer to this one. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Look at that. It's just they're just waving it about the place. A big fat blunt. <laughs> 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 and I can say, if there are any young people watching, it didn't do anything for me, and I don't recommend it. <laughs> No, I don't really like it. I tried it and I didn't very much what enjoy it. What do you expect them to do? Oh. Oh, they, you've given these paddles. <laughs> and you really think they're all going to go, yeah! <laughs> I'm high as a kite! I've done all the drugs! I'll, be, I'll give you complete professionalism under a normal interview situation. But give me a paddle, I'll reveal everything to you! Of course! I've been running. I just got up this morning, I was completely naked. Do you think this is what Nile's going to say? I got up this morning, I smoked a big doobie. I. I, I around in my shower completely <laughs> naked and then I ran around naked in the streets <laughs> and then I got on an aeroplane and fucked everyone in the room <laughs> that's what I did I was in the loo with a big doobie <laughs> and a big doobie in the mouth and the loo completely naked and guess what the door was open I was in public too <laughs> As wrong as they're not going to do that. They're media trained I mega know. stars. Well, <laughs> this is this is what the paddle should look like. Never, never. Both sides, never, <laughs> never, never. <laughs> right, we can end the game. We can, that's ended the game. That spoiled the game for everyone. That spoiled the game. You've spoiled the game for everyone. <laughs> I hope you're proud of yourself. You won't put that in the show like that. My wife will no, be No, the best bit was about <laughs> yours pretending to smoke a doobie. You're doing that. <laughs> no, that's the best bit. That's the point. And, and you're doing a bad Irish accent. I was putting all the... Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Which was insulting to my Irish friend here. <laughs> oh, dear. You know, you're right. You have to protect yourselves to an extent. You know, there's speculation about it all your time, and things you say get reported and sometimes misreported, you know, deliberately misreported. Uh, so I had a few stories here, and I want to see whether these were true or not, and whether or not you know this. Here's one which was it's so weird that Harry apparently, this was in the papers, Harry was sick last year on a roadside when he fell ill after a long hike, and a fan then collected the vomit and tried to sell it on eBay. <laughs> was that true, though? Do you, was that actually for sale, do you know? Uh, I, I don't <laughs> know if it made it to eBay, <laughs> but it was, a, it was a thing. I saw a thing on the internet the other day of you, which was someone had stored a fart of yours in a jar from a party. <laughs> How would you prove that? And he was that? selling it for $10. It was like, it's a genuine Harry Styles fart in a jar. 
Wow. With what? A certificate of authenticity? Well, I don't know. He was like, <laughs> he, he, I, I came across this the other day in my, in my um, garage. It's a jar that Harry farted in when we were younger. But and... here's the thing. That's a weird piece of merchandise to have because... It is. It's exclusive. What it do is. you do? Do you keep... Do you save it for a special occasion and break it out like quality <laughs> streets at Christmas? Do you say, you know what? We've had a good day. Let's break that fire. <laughs> so... <laughs> The you, you can't get it back in the jar. It's like a genie. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a weird one. It was weirder for me because my mum sent it to me and was like. What, the far? Yeah. <laughs> the headline. Uh, the, like a link to it on eBay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, people, everyone likes different things. What, yes. what did she say when you, she sent the email? What was the message? Was it like. My son, I'm proud of you, at last. You, or was it like, oh, God, this is weird, or...? I think it was, uh, is this real? Are you the seller? <laughs> uh... OK, how about this one? One D singer reveals STD worries after koala bear incident. <laughs> who, who wants to tell us what this story is about? Who heard about this one? I think I <coughs> said quality. a joke one time and it went way too far. What was the joke? <laughs> well, koala bears carry a certain STD, which is... The joke was that he had chlamydia. chlamydia. Yeah. Yeah. Koala bears do carry. Which isn't chlamydia. a joke. It's no joke for koala bears. No, no, no. no. Let's stop with it. It's a real thing. Yeah. So you were worried you'd maybe caught it after... I made a joke about it somewhere. There's me looking very scared about holding that Look, there you thing. go. He's already got and it. And he weed on me and it's... They pass it that way and, yeah. His face says, shit, I've got chlamydia. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually what I've heard for. <laughs> yeah. Chlamydia. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. That, would be a good, that would be a good advert for the cream for chlamydia. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shall we take a break and then come back and I will grill you more about drug use and personal life? <laughs> <laughs> Still to come, we've got more chat with One Direction. <laughs> Welcome back to the Jonathan Ross Show. I'm still here with One Direction and Michael McIntyre, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is the one I know you particularly like being asked. What's happening in your love lives at the moment? Who's single? Who's mingled? Who's looking for a Pringle? <laughs> wow. You're all single, aren't you? I think we are, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Single, yeah. single, single, single. I'm married with two children. Yeah. <laughs> Michael, joking aside, though, I know when I see the boys perform early on, and they were great, they were great, weren't they, ladies and gentlemen? They're doing another song on the net. I felt jealous. I felt jealous that I'd never been in a band, I'd never had that moment performing on stage, mm. I couldn't do it, you know. It must feel great. And I know you, you, were, you were saying you wanted to learn how they did that mic technique, cos you had some good mic moves going on there. I was having fun, I went over, cos I could see that Liam was working the mic spin. Well, let's see, how do you do, Liam? Show, teach Michael. Let's have a masterclass <laughs> in the mic spin for Michael McIntyre. Don't. Nice. Do you all do this? No, no, no. no. So what is going on here? So just... You, you say just, and then it goes Talking really quickly. Like, round 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 you have to hold it by the big end before yeah, you, you have to drop it, it down and then do that. Right. What? You uh, go like wait a minute. Well, you have to drop it down a bit? To there, and then let it go round your hand. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, I try, I try. But you start there. Maybe. And then it's going in just oh. a... <laughs> Michael, no. Oh, when you're next, do your, when you're next on stage doing stand-up, I want you to slip that in. Just Definitely slip that in halfway through. Yeah, so slip that in with the mic on my head. How am I going to do that? <laughs> I forgot you did that. I forgot you did that. <laughs> you, you give it a go. I'm going to go for a double. Ooh. Oh, Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Changes. There you go. Changes. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Earlier, Michael comes up to me and goes, oh, I can't get your song out of my head. I said, which one? He goes... Changes. <laughs> I was like, is that the only thing? He's like, yeah, that's all. That's all we need. <laughs> but that's all we need I if you can do the mic flick. They're very changes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm hoping it's still great being in the band. I'm hoping you are enjoying it because it looks great and seeing you on stage together, it feels right. It looks great. I'm hoping you're enjoying it as much as you ever did. Yeah, I, I think it's been so much fun, and um, you know, we're. Very happy to kind of have the new album out. It's the one that we're definitely most proud of. We've worked probably the hardest on it. Uh, already there's been speculation about the lyrics for one of the songs in particular, Perfect. Uh, who wrote this? It was Harry and Louis wrote this, yeah? Mm -hmm. OK, I've got some lyrics here. But if you like causing trouble up in hotel rooms and if you like having secret little rendezvous, if you like to do the things you know that we shouldn't do, baby, I'm perfect. It's more and there's been speculation that this has been written by you about some of your relationships, about one relationship in particular, about your time with Taylor Swift. Okay. 
I didn't know that was the speculation. That's the speculation. Right. So what would be your answer to that speculation if you were pressed? Well, because I'm a media-trained person, <laughs> I'd say um, I think everyone writes from personal experience. Well, Taylor and, certainly uh, does. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I think you draw from lots of different things. And songs aren't always necessarily about what people may take them to be about. It would be rarely be about one person as such, but there would be, say, elements of a time with one person, <coughs> Taylor, where you... <laughs> you would draw upon those moments, obviously. I think everybody writes from personal experience. <laughs> and, uh, I think it doesn't always apply necessarily to what you might think wow. that it's about. Sometimes it does. That was almost word perfect, it's the good, first eh? answer you gave me. <laughs> Guys, that is uh, so much fun having you back on the show. Thank you Thank so much you so for coming much. on. Uh, and it's great to see that you're still enjoying it. And it's also nice to know that you're taking a break, which I think you probably, A, have earned, but B, probably need as well. So it's great for that. But you are definitely going to come back, aren't you? Definitely. OK. And are you at all worried? <laughs> Do you worry at all that when you come back, it's going to be different? Because uh, a year can be, even just a year, it can be a long time in show business. <laughs> There'll be changes. There'll be changes. <laughs> it's great having you here. Ladies and gentlemen, will you join thank me you. saying thank you? Thanks, of course, to One Direction and, of course, to Mr Michael McIntyre. <laughs> <laughs>